So good morning on this rainy All Saints Sunday to those of you who are joining us for online worship with the community of Cedar Park United and letting you know that we are in the sanctuary again this morning. There are three people from the tech team and also live and in person for the first time in 20 months. We have Douglas on the piano this morning, which is wonderful. No, you don't need to start playing yet, Douglas. This is <laughs> Just say hi. There you go. <laughs> Douglas on the piano. Douglas on the piano means Douglas has to play. <laughs> no, not just yet. So while people are settling, we will just get ourselves ready and our camera shots ready for the rest of worship, and the prelude will begin live in a minute or so.
Good morning to you all, and welcome to this time of worship online with the community of Cedar Park United Church, which is situated in Pointe Claire, Quebec. It is being live streamed this morning from our sanctuary to you wherever you are in the world. Cedar Park is a LGBTQ plus affirming ministry of the United Church of Canada. And as I said, we are situated in Pointe Claire on the island of Montreal. We are blessed to live in lands long cared for and stewarded by the indigenous peoples of this region, the Ganyangahaga and other nations of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. As mostly settler people in our congregation, we acknowledge that our relationship with land and with indigenous peoples has been destructive and untrusting. And so we are committed as a community of faith to the work of justice and of reconciliation with First Nations people and with all who have come to this part of Turtle Island and now call this place home. A special welcome to all of you who are joining us for this All Saints Day Sunday worship, where we, the community of living saints, remember those loved saints of our families and this community whom we have lost to death in the past year. We pray that this time of worship will be a time of consolation, a time to share together the, both the joy and the pain of living with love that outlasts dying. And we hope that it will be also a time of encouragement to you to leave the sanctuary time of worship in order to live God's dream for the healing and mending of God's good earth and her creatures. So let us begin our worship with greeting and with centering. In the name of God, grace and peace be with you. And also with you. I invite you to center with your bodies as well as your minds and your spirits and first to put your feet onto the ark of the earth, this one planet we share, this earth that binds and connects us to one another in a global community. And I invite you to take your hands and for a moment hold them open and empty. An empty vessel waiting to be filled with the blessings of God for the living of our days, but also for sharing with those with whom we share this life. We take a moment to breathe slowly, deeply, becoming aware that breath itself is life, that our breathing echoes the rhythm of the universe of newness and expansion, of release and letting go. And as we breathe, we put our hands to our hearts, especially on this day when we hallow the memory of loved ones, knowing that we and all whom we have ever loved, and even those we cannot love, are held this close to the heart of God. clearing our minds of the distractions that may be around us. We focus in on this time and place of worship wherever we are. And if we have candles in our homes, now would be the time for us to light them as I light this one, our Christ candle, 
reminding us that we are all children of the light of Christ. And I'm going to invite you to join with me in the call to worship that you'll see on your screen. And it begins with the quotation from the book of Revelation and then moves into responses that you'll see on the screen and you're welcome to join in all of it or just the parts in bold. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell among them, and they shall be God's people. This is the thin place, the thin time when heaven and earth are close, the veil between them as thin as breath, as soft as gossamer. This This is is the the day day when we weep weep for the the dead, dead, and and God God touches our tears with blessing for our our grieving. grieving. This is the day when the company of God's saints, living and dead, remembered and forgotten, all joined to sing broken hallelujahs made whole and holy by the breath of prayer. Let us us gather gather then, then, we saints saints of God, God, to worship. Now I invite you to join with me in prayer. Holy One, holiest of holy ones, maker of souls and spinner of stars, weaver of the gossamer threads of life, thin this time and place for us. Collapse the space between earth and heaven past and now, failure and forgiveness. Loosen our grip, our death grip on life. Open us to the impossible mystery of eternity and disorient us from our dead certainties and unbind us from the shrouds that constrict our holy imagination so that for this all-hallowed day we can keep company with our saints and yours, living and dead. Amen. We move into the time of exploring God's Word together, and the Gospel reading for today is the lectionary's choice for All Saints Day. And it was no doubt chosen because of the ringing declaration in it by Jesus that he is the resurrection and the life. And on that promise lies our own hope of life beyond our mortality. Now the lectionary only gives us the very end of what is a chapter-long, suspenseful, unfolding drama of a man called Lazarus brother to Martha and Mary, and the three of them close, long-time friends of Jesus. Now, Lazarus is deathly ill. The sisters know what to do. They send for Jesus. They do what all we folk of faith do in times of deathly illness. They call in the prayers and the friends. They called him in for the work of vigil with the dying because that is spiritual, intimate, hard, and holy work. And Jesus is right up there for them. Jesus is both prayer and friend. Now, the suspense of the narrative reaches breaking point 
when Jesus travels through Judea, through a threatening landscape, annoyingly, mysteriously calm and slow, while this impending death looms and all others are as we would be frantic with worry. The worst happens. Lazarus dies. The household is quickly filled with casseroles and flowers, cards and friends, caregivers and consolers and grievers. But it's pretty obvious from John's narrative that there is a prayer and friend missing. Jesus is still not there. And Martha is keeping watch out on the road. Four days. As soon as Jesus is spotted in the distance, she goes out to meet him, not greet him, more like confront him. And this is where we pick up the story as John tells it in chapter 11. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been there, my brother would not have died. And then she said, But you can still pray, and I know that God will hear your prayer and give you what you ask. And Jesus answered her, Martha, Lazarus will rise again. I know that, she responded. I know he will rise again with the resurrection of the dead on the last day. To which Jesus answered the words that we all cling to at every death. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And those who truly live will never truly die. Do you trust this? Do you believe? Now, Mary, too, came out from their house, and she saw Jesus approaching, and she ran to him and fell at his feet and weeping, and also cried out to him, Lord, if only you had been there, Lazarus would not have died. And as at her tears and at the tears of the mourners around her, Jesus, too, was greatly disturbed, deeply moved. Tell me where you've laid him, he asked. When they showed him the tomb closed fast, Jesus wept. And he said, roll that stone away. But Martha begged him not to, saying, Jesus, he's been dead four days. No, think of the stench. But he insisted reminding her of their earlier conversation. And while they moved away the stone, Jesus prayed to God. And then he cried out loud, Lazarus, come out. The dead man emerged from the tomb, still shrouded, bound, hands, feet, and face in strips of cloth, Jesus said to those gathered about, unbind him, unbind him and let him go. This is the good news of God in Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Would you pray with me? Oh my, oh God, such grief such quantum questions. May the words I speak as we turn this text together touch the hem of your wisdom so that we can live fully into these days claiming life in the face of death. Amen. If only you had been there, my brother need not have died. If only... Martha's cry 
echoed moments, mere hours later, by her sister Mary. The same words, if only you had been here, my brother need not have died. That is the cry of all of us living bodies with souls, the cry that we have asked the universe, God, Jesus, as we have watched the dying, grieved the dying, of a family member, a friend, a mentor, a child, a parent. It's a question that rages against the running out of time, for none of us is ever truly ready for that gaping yaw, that closed tomb, that jar of ashes, that stone placed on the grave. And even we ourselves are rarely ever ready for our own death either. We always want more time. We want more healing. We bargain for a few more years to see the grandchild graduate or married, to settle affairs, to reconcile with the estranged. Whenever death comes, if only crosses our lips, through tears. So Jesus, in this gospel story, is quite the problem. He apparently knows that Lazarus, his longtime close friend, is deathly ill, and yet he doesn't do what we'd expect a Jesus to do. He doesn't drop everything. He doesn't fly across the continent or an ocean. He dawdles. He waits. If you had read those intervening verses in that chapter, you'd find him mouthing off religious platitudes, or at least that's what they sound like to the grieving. And only eventually does he show up in a hot country, no less, four days late. No wonder Martha is angry. He could have done something. He could have done something, because if you read the previous 10 chapters of John's Gospel, as Mary knew that story, she knew about Jairus' daughter, she knew about the centurion's son, she'd heard about the lame who could now dance, the blind ones whose sight is restored, the long illnesses healed. Her friend Jesus did that all the time. Why not for his friend, her brother? Her cry, if only, is the cry of trust betrayed. How dare she question, how dare he question her faith? But staring at that tombstone, faith is no longer enough. It never is. So I'm asking, Jesus, what do we do with you? What did your words mean? What do they mean? Lazarus will rise again, you said? In the sweet by and by, Martha assumed you meant, but many of us don't. And why would they? Our dead don't walk out of tombs. So does your I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus, what does it mean? What does it mean to the dying, to the dead, or to we, the living, who grieve? Unlike Mary and Martha, when we ask you, if only, our dead do not walk out of tombs. So why is this in our gospel? Is there something you're trying to tell us? Something that we are too bound up in the limitations of data and fact to truly fathom some mystery? Perhaps, instead of just listening to you, we should watch you, too. So to you folk watching at home, remember this about John's Gospel of Jesus. The whole book, but most especially this chapter, is anchored in the premise that God, the creator of everything, has chosen 
to enter into humanity so fully in this person of Jesus, the Son of Mary, God's love made known in flesh and bone, so that whatever we see Jesus doing, that is what God is doing, saying, thinking, feeling. So whatever Jesus says and does is like an icon, a window into the heart of God. So let's replay that story again, this anguished story of human grief. When Jesus finds out that Lazarus is mortal, like all of us, he doesn't push death back for a moment like we would want him to. Instead, he comes right into the messiness of it, the four days deadness of it. Jesus comes then. Martha and Mary and we, we think it's all over, that there's nothing to be done, that it is too late. But this is the thing about the gospel. For God, for Jesus, it is not too late. Because when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, and then carries on to say, those who really live never truly die, we know that in our souls, don't we? Let me try this with you. How many of you, of us, still talk to our dead in the secrecy of our houses? How many of us, in the moments when we most need it, remember their wisdom? How many of us smell lavender and are transported immediately to our grandma's knee? We find ourselves cooking their favorite food on their birthday, though they've been dead a decade. How many of us watch for the cardinal? or see a glimpse of their face in a nephew. Those who truly live never really die, do they? Do you trust this? That was his question. Do you trust this? Moving further into the story, when Jesus weeps with Mary, their hearts in this Sad synchronicity as they stare together and hold their noses against the harsh reality of death. That's when we see in this story that God does hear our grief. Not just hear our grief, but joins in with it with all of the eternal heartache of heaven to accompany our blank mortal grieving. And then there's that moment, Lazarus, come out, when Jesus talks to the dead as if they are alive. When he does this, and does it in the company of those of us who witness death, and says, unbind him and let him go, what is God saying to us? Are we hearing God's invitation to the dead to live? And for us to live with the freedom of letting them go into eternity. Now I'm left at the end of reading this text and doing my best with it to realize that human words can never fully express what the depths of our hearts and souls perceive in moments of love that outlast death. How can we truly get our heads, our hearts, our guts, our souls around this mystery that God's realm, God's healing, God's love, God's being envelops death and eternity as well as life and mortality, weaving them together into this one eternal now. We humans never fully manage that. But today is the day that we give ourselves permission to try. 
through tears, through names spoken again, through candles, through silence entered and song stirred to unbind our loved ones and set them free into the dance of love that outlasts death, to set them free into the heart of God and to set them free even for us into the freedom of our memory, knowing that they and we are cradled from birth through death to eternity. Amen. Before we move into our liturgy for the saints remembered, we will pause for a moment to offer to God our aching questions, our tiny trust that we can truly live in ways that proclaim our faith. Through simple acts of volunteering our time, the gifts of our financial offerings to those organizations that spread hope and life and joy including this faith community. So we'll pause silently for a moment and I will include that time of silence with a prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Sois béni, notre Dieu. Blessed are you, great God of all, pour les dons de vie des temps d'amour, for the gift of life cherished and full, for the gifts of time and talent, for the financial resources that you entrust to us to use to make a difference for good this side of eternity. Puissions-nous devenir tes mains, tes pieds, ta vie, ta grâce, ta miséricorde, ton accueil à tous les vivants. Let us be your hands, your feet, your life, your grace, your mercy, your welcome to all the living. This we pray as friends of Jesus and followers of his way of love and justice. Amen. As we turn our community prayer towards the remembrance of the saints, those blessed by God, we will begin with the prayer that Jesus taught us. But before we do that, let me share this. Whenever I pray this prayer, and especially in this space here, I pause long enough to become aware of the cloud of witnesses and the company of saints that surround us every time. Saints of this place long gone, I can still see where they would sit. But also the saints who pray to God as Allah, as Yahweh, as Great Spirit. Those who pray in tongues I can't pronounce. And when that company of witnesses joins with us, this prayer is powerful and it becomes the anchor to this time of our remembrance. So when we have finished praying the Lord's Prayer together, we will pray for the living saints of the world and of this community before we move into prayer and remembrance for the loved ones of our community and of family members, people of the congregation who have died in the past year. Family have shared with us photos or evocative images and some of the people that you will see on the screen, you may not know, but we can be sure that God does, that God holds each one close to God's heart. And we can hold those who grieve close to ours in our prayers, for this is the tough, 
holy work that is ours to do today. So following this, where you will see all of these names come on the screen, the choir will sing the anthem and I will light a candle for each of those named ones as well as the named ones shared with KidZoom this morning, a number of family members, beloved family pets, strangers, but strangers known to friends that they have remembered. I'm going to invite you in your homes while I do that to light candles for your loved ones too, still blessed with our love that outlasts death. So then, let us pray in company with all people in all times and places who call upon God, saying, Our Mother, our, mother, our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so we continue in prayer. Loving, healing God, gentle Jesus, spirit of life. We surround with prayer those who have asked us to pray for them in their time of need, of illness, of surgery, or recovery, naming them now into this collective time and space. Praying for Sam, Grace, for Peter, for Jim, for Catherine, Nick, Mike, for Mary, Jean, Catherine, Dick, Natasha, Jacqueline, Emily, Jessica, and Jamie, Libby, Joan, Tom. Praying too for newborns and preemie grandchildren, for adult children striving for mental wellness, for people in the midst of relationship turmoil or vocational uncertainty, and for all today who gather with us to remember, to give thanks and to honor with the gift of time and prayer, loved ones they have released into mortal death. Lift us into the company of your saints, living and dead, Holy One, and by your grace, let gratitude lighten our grief, remembering hands that held us, voices that inspired us, and lives and wisdom that shaped us, and forgiveness that has healed us. We dare to trust in this ultimate mystery of all mortality, eternal one, that these loved saints of ours and of yours are all now gathered around the heart hold of your love and grace, singing the hallelujahs that pierce darkness and even death, igniting light and hope among the living. We remember.
I invite you now, while we light a candle for each of these people and while the choir sings, to light a candle or candles at home for your loved ones who may be long dead, but still living in your love and memory, never forgotten. Jesus, would I be Savior, come and dwell in me. Bring me peace and heal my soul. Grant me grace and make me whole. As you teach me how to live. The eternal souls of all these, beloved of God, are held close to the heart of God. They are at peace. Let these pinpricks of light, these moving flames, and the love they represent remind us, nous ne sommes pas seuls, 
we are not alone. We live in God's world, in, in life, life, in, in death, death, in, in life, life beyond, beyond death. God, God is, is with, with us. We are, we are not, not alone. alone. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Thank you, everyone, for choosing to spend time in worship with the community of faith of Cedar Park this morning as we have celebrated All Saints Day a little early. Please share this video with anybody who may, you think, may be glad of its spiritual nourishment today. It will be on our website later this afternoon and on our YouTube channel. Speaking of that YouTube channel, if you have not yet subscribed to it, do. We actually would like to get more subscriptions to it so we can change its crazy name from F something or other to Cedar Park United. I want to thank again all who have made it possible for us to do worship in your homes with you these past 19 months. Uh, the tech team and uh, Douglas and the choir who have been singing tracks and putting them down for months and months. It's good to be able to thank you and see your face while I'm doing that. So thank you, Douglas. We are just a few weeks away now from starting the next chapter in our worship together to prepare to open for on-site worship as well as live stream on November the 21st. Next Sunday, November the 7th, we will gather again online for worship after having set our clocks back, continuing our conversations about community in endemic times with a closer look at how closely paired sacrifice and joy are in shaping thriving community. Let us close our worship this week with Shirley Murray's powerful updating of the classic hymn for all saints before we send one another out into our day and our world with blessing. And it would be remiss of me not to say today that I wish all children and all childlike souls a wonderful Halloween evening, rain or not. Let us sing together.
Let's send one another out with blessing. All living, all loving, all dying and all rising, our gift and grace from God our Creator, who makes, who makes us, us, mends us, us forgives and, and restores us, us and who holds us close from birth to death, to life, to life beyond, beyond death. So let us go with God's blessing, the love of God to share in creation, the way of Jesus to guide our journey, the companionship of the Holy Spirit to, to strengthen us for, us for the living of our days until time is no more and, and all that remains, remains is love. Amen. Amen.